Joining us now with more on the historic impact of the Abraham Accords that continue to this day, New York Times bestselling author of the book Inside Trump's White House, The Real Story of His Presidency, Doug Weed. Doug, today is such a historic day when we look back. Nobody thought President Trump could do that, and yet he did it. He did it. And you know, Natalie, one wonders if he had been reelected, <laughs> peace would have broken out all over the Middle East. It's very, very possible. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Morocco and the Sudan, and because uh, there was a great chain reaction when uh, Donald Trump had this uh, uh, treaty with the United Arab Emirates. Uh, uh, Morocco came on board, and then these other countries, one by one, came on board. Uh, some of them uh, wanted to uh, reconfigure the Middle East and relationships with Israel and others because of Iran and the threat of Iran. Others because of the Islamic Brotherhood backed by Turkey. And uh, Donald Trump very cleverly and wisely used this tension to help build the relationship with these nations and with Saudi Arabia, too, which was very close uh, to tumbling into this agreement. But they expect some movement on Palestine. Keep that in mind. Well, we took for granted the peace that we had for four years. The fact that President Trump didn't start any new wars. He was ending wars. These people that had been at war for so long actually trying to get these countries to work together to recognize Israel. Even when you talk about the capital, when you talk about sovereignty over the Golan Heights, he did so much on foreign policy, but he never got any credit for it. Yeah, it's interesting how you mentioned that. Boy, you know how to punch the right buttons. Yes, yeah, soon after Joe Biden was elected, the rockets are raining down on Israel. It's just uncanny. Uh, peace looked so easy when Donald Trump was president. No one gave him any credit for it. The news media panned it like a whole hum, even though it was the first time in 40 years that we had a president that didn't see a war start on his watch. And, and soon after Biden came into power, uh, they, they miscued on Iran. They signaled to Iran, you can do what you want. They gave money to Iran, which was passed on to Hamas, and they rained rockets down on Israel. It's, it's scary what can happen in the Middle East. And now with the withdrawal from Afghanistan, it's, it's, it's making me nervous. It is. And President Trump, even the way he would have managed the Afghanistan withdrawal would have been done so well and everyone would have known where he stood. His legacy goes forward even when you look at the peace that he was able to do, getting these countries to talk together, to work together. That legacy, everyone will always remember that. That was four years of peace and even a day of peace. People remember that. Doug, thank you for what you do, keeping his legacy alive as we're all still living it in a way and fighting for it. So God bless you and we'll see you soon. God bless you. You're welcome. And we know, we know how he would have handled, uh, Trump would have handled the exit from Afghanistan because he handled that exit from Lebanon the same way. Strength on the ground and then a carefully uh, exquisite exit. Really, it's like when you look at it, Biden, he got every foreign policy decision wrong. President Trump really got every single one right. So they really are a tale of complete opposites on this. And it's, it's sad what we're having to live through right now. But we pray for peace. We still do. God bless you, Doug. That's right. God bless you, Natalie.